one of the big questions I had coming off the announcement of the Xbox Series X was not at all about the machine itself, but rather one of the first truly confirmed next-gen games that was announced alongside it, Senua's Saga Hellblade 2. The trailer manages to impress, but I asked myself immediately, is it even real time? And beyond this, is it representative of what we can expect from the next Xbox and what exactly separates it from the last gen in Senua's Sacrifice? Basically, how good of a barometer is this trailer for next gen graphics? And such a question warrants some theorizing and investigation. But to answer this question, the best place to really start is not even with the content of the trailer itself, but in its name. Conveniently, the trailer is labeled as quote-unquote in-engine in the video title on the Xbox YouTube channel. It's not an all too common thing to do, but it gives an important clue. The usage of the phrase in-engine tells us at least what it is not. The trailer for Senua's Saga Hellblade 2 is not like the announcement video for Motorstorm or Killzone 2, which were produced as offline pre-rendered target videos outside of the game engine. Such videos like Killzone 2's announcement trailer back in the day had the purpose of identifying key visual elements, styles, and even graphical effects that the production game engine would attempt to emulate or simulate at a real-time fidelity. But really, they are about capturing the feel for a game that's to be pitched and its art direction. The translation of that visual concept over to a real-time rendered game running on a game engine can actually change quite a lot. An engine in this case will mean that it'll look closer to something like the real game. And concretely, it means here Unreal Engine 4 powering this demo. That same engine powering the original Senua's Sacrifice. An engine and development environment in which Ninja Theory has spent a lot of time and research and development in cooperation with Epic and 3 Lateral and Cubic Motion, among others, to capture and replicate the performance of Malina Jürgens, the actress embodying the character of Senua. So it's in-engine which is a good sign, but is it real-time, as in rendering the geometry effects and everything in real-time on a PC or Xbox Series X hardware? Well, the trailer does have the evidence of being imperfect. For example, the depth of field in the trailer has standard problems that a lot of rasterized depth of field has, where there's halos surrounding objects like these severed hands here, or you can see how the tiny strands of Senua's hair at the end of the video seem to pop and fizzle in the depth of field. These are things that would be reasonably cleaned up by super sampling or offline rendering techniques. Or they could just be an oversight in the trailer itself. Those are few and far blemishes though in between a nearly flawless presentation in regards to aliasing. If you compare the image quality of this trailer with 4K images of the first game, that first game manages to look much more aliased even with its state of the art anti-aliasing. And beyond this, we really don't have many direct answers from the source itself in Microsoft as to the nature of this video. In the GameSpot interview with Phil Spencer, he or an Xbox representative is not quoted as saying it is real time. They just say that it is an engine. The part about it being real time is something maintained by GameSpot alone there. And if it were real time, if you look at the metadata for the video file, it is merely just 24 frames per second, and the actual resolution of the rendered frame in between cinematic black bars is 3840 by 1608. So a little bit more than 74% of a real 4K in spatial resolution at 80% of its frame rate. Altogether, that is 60% of the amount of pixels pushed per second versus a 4K 30, which is decidedly easier to render than the native thing. Remember how fantastic the Ordier 1886 looked? Well, the lessened total resolution of that game's chosen aspect ratio did indeed help it run and have as excellent pixel quality as it did have. Even if this ends up being a pre-rendered cinematic or something running on a high-end PC, according to the GameSpot article, they mention in an off-quote that the video represents new levels of detail, lighting, and rendering techniques we have yet to see on consoles. So what kind of detail, lighting, and rendering techniques have yet to be seen on consoles, and what is representative here? The increase of geometric detail I think is the easiest one to immediately see in the trailer. If you look at objects like the skulls on the ground here, or the bones scattered around, you will see a density of geometry really not at all possible on current generation consoles. 
as has been shown many times throughout the generation in games such as Shadow of the Tomb Raider or Metro Exodus. Console versions of games call out tessellation found prominently in PC versions. And if you look at a game like Senua's Sacrifice, the environment in that game, which was targeting a current gen console, is decidedly lacking in small geometric detail, where most of that geometric detail is reserved for the character of Senua. Here in the trailer for the second game, geometric detail is universally high for every single object shown on screen. Like here you can see how individual bark is modeled on these cross-cut beams in the following scene. Or you can see how individual rocks of unprecedented roundness stretch far out into the distance. These are geometric levels of detail far in excess of those found on current gen consoles. Even in the best examples among them, if you look at something like Death Stranding's shores. At the same time, that level of geometric detail out into the distance is something that gives me pause, as there's no visible level of detail transitions at any point in the trailer. Normally, in-game, you can see distant geometry either deformed due to real-time tessellation, forming their detail, or you can see patches of geometry snap or fade into higher detail as the camera advances. Sure, next-gen consoles will see new techniques for culling of geometry and managing level of detail to increase detail overall, but that perfection of geometric detail at all distances when the camera moves is an aspect of the trailer that makes me think it's pre-rendered. I can imagine these assets looking this good close to the camera when the LOD is highest, but holding up so perfectly into the distance and also not showing any form of visible LOD switching, that's perhaps a bridge too far. The rest of that off quote from the GameSpot interview describes lighting and rendering techniques as being representative of those yet to be seen on consoles, and makes me concretely think of two bits of tech. The first would be triangle ray traced based lighting, as we have seen on PC with NVIDIA GPUs, and the other is volumetric simulation and representations that are basically in no games out there to date, excluding some one-off implementations in the PC versions of some games, like the smoke wisping and moving about due to outside forces in Batman Arkham Knight on PC. The first game in Senua's Sacrifice uses standard baked out billboard particles for any such an effect. In the trailer though here, we're given a glimpse of such a volumetric effect when the volcano chimneys out huge clouds of ash and smoke that moves in a suitably fluffy and realistic manner, billowing and flowing. If you look, you can even see how that cloud of ash is casting shadows onto itself and affecting the shading of the non-sun facing side. You can even see how the ash cloud is casting a shadow onto the terrain below it. While I would love to finally see some real-time volumetric fluid simulations in games, the advantage of a trailer or cinematic is that you can fake such simulations rather well. Since the ash here is only seen from one angle, it could just as likely be a baked animation played back as a 2D video in the engine layered over the game geometry. This is exactly what we saw with the avalanche in Rise of the Tomb Raider in 2015. Or it could be aping the volumetric look by layering 2.5D animated textures with some parallax, like how we saw in the Infiltrator demo from 2013, which makes the explosion there look so fluffy. Really, until we see something more substantial and more angles of such a substantial thing, it is better to remain skeptical. In that same vein, assigning the impressive lighting effects in the trailer as being the result of triangle-based ray tracing is not a clear-cut thing. For example, as I showed off in our DF Direct after the Xbox Series X announcement, something interesting is happening if you look at the bones here in this one scene. With screen space reflections, you could arguably not see the darkened underside of the bones in the reflection, as that seems to be out of screen space. Rather, you would just see the light part of the bone in the reflection, as that is visible on screen. Even as I say that though, it could just once again be a planar reflection, like I mentioned for Godfall. The best surfaces for saying that you're looking at ray traced reflections are those of curved, complex surfaces, where you can see off screen reflections on the surface and self reflections of the object itself. If you see such objects in a trailer with such reflections, then you can more conclusively state that a reflection is indeed ray traced. The rest of the lighting found in the trailer gives no further clues. For example, the soft ambient lighting from the sky found in this scene could simply be light probes or light maps. It is on screen for too short a time to say the game is utilizing something like Unreal Engine 4's awesome ray traced sky lighting feature. 
or these torchlights with their shadows in the night scene. Here the shadows cast from them, or the ambient glow they have, does not evidence any of the artifacting I've come to expect from real-time ray tracing, such as temporal ghosting or any bit of swimming noise. It is much like the rest of the trailer, where everything on screen is remarkably clean. So such lights could just be placed lights by artists with crisp shadow maps, just as easily as they could be ray traced effects, but with their sample counts and ray counts pumped up extremely high for a pre-rendered trailer. So in the end here, I'm at a pass. The asset quality in this trailer is at a height that is decidedly a gen above that which we've seen in other games usually, and especially in Senua's Sacrifice before this. This is something I expect that next generation consoles will be able to show, but the level of the perfection of that geometric detail in terms of going into the distance, even given the constraints of 24 FPS and sub 4K, that just seems really unrealistic to me. I have yet to read about perfectly invisible LOD transitions being a thing. As to the rest of the visual fidelity put forth in terms of lighting or effects, it is indeed a healthy step above that seen in the previous game and many games in the last generation. But we need much more footage before we start seeing what type of techniques we are looking at and how dynamic they may or may not be. Trailers and cinematics are even better smoke and mirror shows than games themselves. And if this trailer just ends up being a bit of pre-rendered smoke, what rendering aspects of it are actually attainable all the time in a real game still need to be proven. Basically, this trailer looks nice but says extremely little. That is a bit of a downer, but it is good to be skeptical, managing expectations regarding next-gen. If anything, this trailer shows us that next-gen assets are going to be authored to an incredible level of detail at least. But the level of dynamism and the perfection of that detail into the distance really needs to be demonstrated. And until that happens, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you are already a subscriber, then consider hitting that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to talk to me about Senua's Saga, whether it's real time or not and such, then write a comment below or follow me and Digital Foundry on Twitter. And as always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell und auf Wiedersehen.